Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. ELE 424 Analog Electronics 1. This is the last topic in the syllabus. Uh, it's general concept of amplifiers. Um, the, um, uh, this video is uh, the only video uh, under the title of Amplify Again in the video pack 5 general concepts. Uh, what you're going to watch next is um, a recording that was done of screen casting, uh, which was work done two years ago. Um, thank you. Um, and after this, uh, there will be no more videos for the semester. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Okay, so this will be our final video for ELE 424 Analog Electronics 1 General Concept of Amplifiers. So we've done um, semiconductor materials, diode, uh, bipolar junction transistors, and MOSFET. Uh, we will close this course by having a quick look at what the general concept of amplifiers uh, is all about. Okay, so the topics covered would be, um, we will first look at the concept of amplifier in general and the two-port systems approach. Uh, next, we will have a look at the two-port system and the effect of connecting a load resistance RL and a source resistance RS to our two-port system. And after that, we will look at the two-port system and how it explains cascaded amplifiers. So what you're going to have is that you're going to have several amplifiers connecting one after another. Um, next, we will have a look at the gain in decibels because uh, before this, our gains are usually in terms of uh, linear values. But here we will look at uh, the values to be in logarithmic scale. And finally, we'll just have a look at um, general frequency considerations of the amplifiers. Okay, so this is the concept of amplifier. I have a, a big laser pointer, a red large laser pointer here because um, Moose said that, Moose suggested that I have a, mm, a bigger pointer. So I discovered that there is such a thing as a laser pointer here. So what we're going to have is that, um, okay, an amplifier can amplify signals and we know that the output signal power is greater than the input signal power. Okay, so it could be voltage, it could be current, or we could be measuring in terms of power itself. It can amplify a DC signal or an AC signal. Okay. The ability of amplifiers to increase power is sourced from DC power supply. So if you look at this uh, picture here, you will see that there is a V uh, DC here, or sometimes it's labeled as V. Uh, CC or um, VDD uh, in our circuits. So this DC power supply is what provides uh, the ability to uh, increase the power. It, it is uh, able to source the power. So with active devices as amplifying device in the circuit. So first we have this uh, DC power supply. Second we have active devices in our amplifier and these active devices are the transistors that we have studied. It could be BJT, it could be MOSFET, or it could be any other kind of um, active devices that allows amplification. So an amplifier is a device that has two terminals. This is an amplifier. This amplifier has an active device in it. It could be BJT, it could be MOSFET. Um, in general, we can label it as a device that has two terminals, i.e. input, and output. So for amplification in the AC domain, uh, for our course, our amplification is uh, in the AC domain, in the small signal AC analysis. Two types of inputs shown as sources are connected to the amplifier. So these sources here, okay, would consist of a DC voltage, okay, and this DC voltage uh, is to ensure biasing of transistors as well as an AC signal to be amplified, um, shown as AC source. I'm going to correct the typo here. Okay. okay. All right. 
So an amplifier consists of one or more active devices. Okay, it can be one active device or it could be more in the circuit. And amplifiers are often described as two port devices um, uh, that would allow you to treat um, the device uh, in a two port system approach. So let's have a look at what the concept of a two port network is. So this slide will explain a two port network in general. So if you look at this diagram here, you will see that there is this blue box here which represents the amplifier. It's written here as A, V and L which represents a voltage gain when there is no load. So if you look at this amplifier, there is this input port and there is this output port and uh, for this particular uh, diagram there is no load shown connected to the output port at the input port there is input current i in there is input voltage v in and the polarity of the input current is such that it is positive going into the top terminal and v in is positive at the top terminal with respect to the bottom terminal and the input impedance is defined as the impedance seen through this uh, input terminal. And the output port consists of IO, ZO and VO. So IO is the output current defined as positive to be entering the amplifier. And output voltage is defined to be positive at the output uh, at the top terminal with respect to the bottom terminal. And the um, output impedance is what is seen. Uh, across the output port terminals. Okay, so introducing the two port network. Why do we need the two port network? So generally, it is often necessary to work with the terminal characteristics of a device rather than the individual components of the system. So what you want to know is that you, you just want to know what the input is and what the output is without actually dealing with the individual design individual components of the system okay so the interest is in the important parameters of the device in this case amplifier but not in the internal construction so before this we were doing dc biasing calculation we were doing uh, ac analysis when we were doing dc biasing uh, we were particularly interested with the internal construction but here uh, there are times when we want to just um, know how to use the device without actually knowing what's inside. So it's actually pre it's actually very uh, convenient to have the concept of a two-port network. It is called a two-port system because there are two sets of terminals, one at the out input and the other at the output. So the input voltage, input current and input impedance as I stated just now. The output voltage the output current and the output impedance and the amplifier is shown without load A, V and L is to indicate that the provided voltage gain is for no load value i.e. at the output port there is no load resistance connected and note that the polarity of the voltages and the direction of the currents are as defined so now we will look at the effect of RL and RS to two port system So this is a two-port network. The figure on the left is drawn with no load, okay, meaning at the output port here is just open circuit. But the figure on your right is drawn with source and load. So at the output port here, before um, going out of the out, uh, output port, um, you uh, uh, RL is added as the load resistance. So the output voltage is taken as the voltage drop across RL. The output impedance is um, uh, seen after RL, meaning that when you consider the output impedance, RL is not included. And at the input side, the source resistance is drawn with a, uh, the source voltage is drawn with the source resistance. Okay, but the source resistance is drawn outside of V in. So when you um, um, uh, determine uh, input impedance Z in RS is not included. Okay. Okay. So two port network. First, let's have a look at the case when there is no load and no source okay no load 
no RL here and no source RS here. Okay. Um, here the uh, circuit is described by these three um, equations uh, where the output voltage is related to the input voltage V in by the voltage gain AV with no load. The output impedance is um, defined as R out and the input impedance is defined as R in. And if you look at how this uh, amplifier is being drawn, it is such that uh, it is drawn with R in to represent the input um, resistance and uh, R out with um, a dependent voltage source labeled as AV and L times V in AV and L times V in here okay in series with R out um, to be connected to the output terminal okay these are all by definition so voltage gain with no load um, uh, AV and L uh, the f the uh, expression is V out is equals to AV and L times V in as stated here. The output impedance Z out is defined by V in equals to zero volts. So when you want to find Z out, which is the output impedance, you set V in equals to zero. Now this is also by definition of the two port network, meaning. AVNL VN is zero, meaning that dependent because VN is set as zero, AVNL VN is also zero, and it can be replaced by a short circuit equivalent when finding the output impedance Z out, making Z out is equals to R out. You know you've done this when you did the um, RE model as well as the um, uh, MOSFET um, uh, AC analysis. Uh, you may not have realized it, but uh, we have done this. It is because it is by the theory of the two-port network. Okay, the input impedance Z in relates the applied voltage to the resulting input current, meaning uh, V over I. Okay, V in over I in of Ohm's law, making input impedance to be equals to R in. So whenever you have an amplifier of any sort you can actually find input impedance output impedance so that you can replace the amplifier with a two-part description of the amplifier we will see an example later on okay so two-part network previously it was no load no source so now let's connect a load uh, to the amplifier so we are connecting a load here an RL it could be um, say a speaker okay for example so load RL is applied to the two port system here. Load RL is applied outside of how the device is um, uh, connected to be seen as Z out. So Z when you find Z out, RL is not included. Okay. Applying voltage divider rule to the output port gives okay this expression V out is equals to is a simple voltage divider rule RL divided by RL plus R out times the voltage that is the total voltage drop across R and RL which is AV and L V in AV and L V in okay so this is the voltage divider rule and from here we can relate voltage gain with load which is which is it which is the new term that we want to call now which is AVL to what we have uh, we, we already know which is AV and L so AVL is V out over V in I can take this V in down to V out and then I can I am left with this expression RL over RL plus R out times AV and L okay so uh, what this is saying is that if you have a load uh, resistance RL um, you are going to have a voltage gain that is less than voltage gain no load um, by this factor of RL over RL plus R out so relating current gain with load to voltage gain with load okay meaning that I want AIL current gain AI 
with load um, to AVL okay I will just put in because I already know that current gain is I out over I in just like voltage gain is V out over V in so current gain is I out over I in this I out and this I in okay and doing Ohm's law for each of I out and I in where I out is um, minus V out over RL and I in is V in over Z in okay so we will have uh, the current gain to be minus V out over V in Z in over RL but V out over V in is already AVL so this is expression of current gain which is um, uh, current gain with load is equals to negative voltage gain with load input impedance divided by RL okay so this is the case when there is load but without source the previous slide just now was two port network without load without source resistance this slide is two port network with load resistance but without source so meaning our next slide is going to be um, uh, with load with source resistance but before we leave this slide this is the, the important point that we were trying to find out you, you need to uh, to remember this formula the loaded voltage gain of an amplifier is always less than a no load level so whenever you design your amplifier be aware that whenever you connect it to a load it's going to be less okay so this is with source oh before we do a with source with load we're going to do one with source but no load first okay now here we have a connection where we have an input voltage source with a source resistance but we have uh, considered a case where there is no load first okay so vs and rs are now applied to the two port system by definition parameters input impedance Z in okay and A V and L are unf unaffected by V S and R S okay because A V and L is V out over V in and V in is taken to be here okay is taken to be at this point and um, input impedance is seen from here okay. however output impedance Z out may be affected by the magnitude of rs and we shall see how okay now the voltage gain voltage gain avs now that is something else because voltage gain avs is v out over vs voltage gain with no load is v out over v in so the fraction of vs reaching the input terminals v in okay is again by voltage divider rule where V in is equals to R in over R in plus R s because R in and R s are in series multiplied by the total voltage drop across them which is V s so we have this expression V in is equals to R in over R in plus R s times V s and from here from our definition of A V and L V out is equals to A V and L times V in from our previous slides we can replace V in with this expression that consists of R s so V out is now A V and L times R in over R in plus R s times V s okay because why because what we want to find out is A V s which is V out over V s resulting in R in over R in plus R s times A V and L okay so now the larger the internal resistance of a signal source this one here okay the lower is the overall gain of the system because once you make this bigger you make this f uh, factor here r in over r in plus r s to be smaller okay so when input source resistance is considered again you will expect that the gain will now be reduced so what is going to happen when you have source which is vs and rs resistance source resistance and load 
RL resistance because when you design an amplifier you want to connect it to a, a source circuit that will be giving you an input signal to be amplified and you want it to be connected to a load circuit be because you want to be amplifying and uh, passing the f uh, signal to another circuit okay that is unavoidable so what is going to happen when you have both at the input side this is what you're going to have the voltage divider linking V in to Vs at the output side again you will have another voltage divider linking V out to AV and LV in across uh, R out and RL so for the total gain which is V out over Vs okay is actually V out over V in which you can get from the output side and V in over Vs which you can get from the input side and you are going to have this expression okay so AVS is actually um, an expression a fraction of AV and L which is determined by these two factors R in multiplied by R in, uh, divided uh, sorry R in divided by R in plus RS multiplied to RL divided by RL plus R out Okay, so what this equation is saying is that both the source and the load resistance will reduce the overall gain of the system okay, even further and RL, RS here and RL form two reduction factors so this is actually a reduction factor because the denominator is smaller than the numerator that need to be considered in designs so when you did designing something for good overall gain the effects of RS and RL must be evaluated individually as well as a product okay first you need to uh, decide how uh, RS affects the amplifier then you need to determine how RL affects the amplifier then you need to see how both of them work together in bringing down the overall gain so now let's have an example 12 in uh, textbook and uh, page 307 now example 12 is actually taking from example 1 we have done this example which is the fixed bias um, a small signal AC analysis with BJT okay I have purposely taken this example so that you see how uh, this actually works so this is an amplifier in that example one long time ago a few weeks ago okay uh, we had to calculate what input impedance is output impedance and uh, gain of the amplifier and we discovered that Z in is equals to 1.07 kilo ohm Z out is 3 kilo ohm and the voltage gain is negative 280 okay so we can convert this into a two-port network and from here we can find out given that the amplifier is connected to RS source resistance of 0 0.3 kilo ohms and RL load resistance which is a 4.7 kilo ohm we can find the voltage gain with load resistance only AVL and then we can find the voltage gain with bo both source and load resistance connected to the amplifier AVS and we shall see how these uh, two resistances affect the gain okay so voltage loaded voltage gain Okay, from the formula that we have covered just now is RL over RL plus R out times AV and L which is RL is 4.7 kilo ohms this is the load resistance the output resistance is this one here output impedance Z out which we have calculated okay multiplied by AV and L AV and L is the voltage gain that we did in example 1 we calculated uh, to be negative 280. You can uh, switch off this video for a while and have a look at the calculations that we did before. Okay, now this is the loaded voltage gain. Now, what happens if we have the source resistance as well? So, when we have the source resistance, we have these two factors bringing down the voltage gain, which is R in over R in plus R S. This is the input impedance. Um, uh, playing its part with the source resistance and the other factor is RL over RL plus R out which comes from the output port so you have this expression 1 
bringing it down by a factor of 0 0.781 the other factor is bringing it down by 0 0.610 and the overall voltage gain is negative 133 compared to 170 with just the load and compared to 280 if you're just considering it without load and without source resistance okay so these are the things that you need to consider if you're designing an actual amplifier another example another example okay now if I, I'm gonna click the previous slide back here the amplifier is shown in its internal components now in this next example 13 is just you do not know what's inside you do not need to know what's inside actually okay that that example just now which I'm gonna click back I you don't actually need to know this all you need to know is that there's a blue box with input impedance output impedance and AVNL okay so here we have an input impedance of 4 kilo ohm output impedance of 2 kilo ohm a loaded voltage gain of negative 480 with a load resistance rl and a source resistance of 0 0.2 kilo ohm so what this question wants you to do this example 13 wants you to do is that you need to determine the gain the loaded voltage gain avl and compare it to the no load which is negative 480 if this RL is 1.2 kilo ohm, that is part A. Part B is that you're going to do the same thing, but you're going to find out what happens if RL is 5.6 kilo ohm. Is the gain going to be worse with 5.6 kilo ohm compared to 1.2 kilo ohm, or is it going to be better? And then you're going to determine uh, the um, uh, effect of the source resistance. If the source resistance 0 0.2 kilo ohm is combined with a load resistance of 1.2 kilo ohms as 1.2 kilo ohms and then you're going to find the current gain ai which is uh, i out over i in with rl equals to um, 5.6 kilo ohm so the first question part a okay it's not difficult you just apply this um, uh, formula so rl is the load resistance here okay and this load resistance is 1.2 kilo ohm r out is output impedance here which is 2 kilo ohms okay multiplied with negative 480 which is this one here um, giving you a total of negative 180 so you're actually comparing if you're comparing here is this is 180 and this is 480 okay just because you have connected this amplifier to a load resistance of 1.2 kilo ohm the next part is what happens if the load resistance rl is 5.6 kilo ohms and not 1.2 kilo ohms and we do the same calculation we're going to find that the gain is 353 meaning that if your load resistance is large okay if your load resistance is large like this one here 5.6 compared to 1.2 kilo ohms uh, the gain the loaded voltage gain is not going to be dropped as um, as much as the lower resistance okay meaning that it's good to have uh, a larger load resistor so the larger the load resistor the better the gain in terms of um, uh, gain for the of the amplifier okay now what happens okay because this calculation here was just calculating uh, uh, presence of load resistance but what happens if you consider the source resistance as well so when you consider the source resistance as well if the load resistance is 1.2 kilo ohms this is what you're going to find okay from 180 you apply this two factor r in over r in plus r s for one of the factor which will give you um which one is r in four kilo ohm? i think this one 0 0.952 and uh, rl over rl plus r out which is going to give you a factor of 0 0.375 multiplied by 480 which give you 171 so now the gain is further reduced to 171 now what about the current gain with rl equals to 5.6 kilo ohm okay if it's 5.6 kilo ohm then i'm going to choose avl of 353 
0.76 multiplied by input impedance over RL. Input impedance is 4 kilo ohms, and RL is uh, in this case 5.6 kilo ohms, uh, giving us a current gain of 252.6. Okay, so if you're studying this on your own, um, I think what is also important is that you know um, which is which. Uh, whether it's input impedance or it's source resistance or whether it's output impedance or it's load resistance okay so you need to know uh, which of this term is referring to which values as well okay so um, having covered all that let's have a look so so what's a good amplifier what are the ideal properties amplifier now a good amplifier should have high input impedance okay Okay, this is the this is this is just the input impedance of the um, if I can just go back um, sorry it's just this one here okay this is the input the input side okay later on I'm going to uh, have a look at the output side only I'm just telling you so that I don't go back and forth okay so this is the input side okay um it's good to have input impedance uh high okay because if you uh do um a voltage divider rule here okay you want most of the input signal to be transferred to the um uh, input impedance you do not want uh uh any voltage drop if possible um, to be dropped across the source resistance so if you get if you if, if the fraction of the uh, voltage source that is intended to go to the VN um, is greater then uh, that is the best okay so we do not want the voltage drop across RS to be uh, uh, large Another ideal property of an amplifier is also that the the output impedance is low. Why? Is because um, if the output impedance is low, then um, the amplified signal, which is A V N L V N, is mostly transferred to V out. Okay. So if um, if because we know that gain is V out over V N, so we want uh, most of V out to be dropped across the load resistance, so it's good to have a low output impedance Z out, meaning that the out the the amplifier's own output impedance do not take um, a lot of the uh, portion of V out. Uh, another ideal property of amplifier is of course very high gain. Okay approaching infinity we well you know that that's not logical but we're just saying that these are ideal properties we aim for the gain to be high and at the same time we aim for the bandwidth to be high i have not explained to you what bandwidth is this will be uh for the last topic of this slide okay so what happens if you have amplif amplifies cascaded in a two-port system what do you mean by cascaded cascaded means you arrange one after another so you have here one amplifier with an input port and an output port okay and a gain of av1 now this in output port here is connected to the input port of the next amplifier av2 and this output amplifier of av2 here this output uh, terminals is connected to the input terminals of av3 and so on until it reaches rl so this is what you call a cascaded amplifiers um, it, uh, cascade is just a general English word then you can look it up in the dictionary okay so two-port systems approach is particularly useful for cascaded systems where AV1, AV2, AV3 etc are the voltage gains of each stage under loaded conditions okay it's not AVNL here it's um, uh, AVL so loaded gain AV1 is determined with the input impedance to AV2 act acting as the load on AV1 so the input impedance of AV2 Z in 2 is actually providing uh, load for uh, amplifier 1 and Z in 3 is acting as a load to the amplifier AV2 
okay and so on so uh, the total voltage gain of the system is actually a multiplication of each of these voltage gain AV1 times AV2 times AV3 and the total current gain is AVT uh, times the input impedance divided by RL here okay so if we know Z in Z out and AV and L of each stage 1, 2, 3, we can find the loaded gain AVL of each of these so that we can find what AV1 is, AV2 is from Z in, Z out and AV and L using information of the next stage as load. Next, we can find the total gain AVT. So, okay, so AVL for each of the stage, if we know Z in, Z out and AV and L of each stage, we can find the AVL using this formula that we have already covered. I'm, I'm just... Um, uh, repeating it here this is nothing new next we find the total gain again from the previous slide which says that you just multiply the gains then you can find the uh, the effect of the source resistance if you want okay by using the formula that we have covered just now which shows that there is two um, uh, reducing factors here but in this case here for RL and uh, RL and R out if or if we already have AVT okay this is represented by AVT and you just multiply it with the input resistance and RS which you're gonna have a look at this example here okay so in this example here this is example 14 page 309 you can have a look at it in the text okay you can have uh, the first amplifier and the second amplifier cascaded you have an input resistance here one kilo ohm um, for the first amplifier, it is an emitter follower with an input impedance of 10 kilo ohm, output impedance of 12 ohms, and the gain is 1. Um, the second amplifier is a common base, the input impedance is 26 ohms, the output impedance is 5.1 kilo ohms, and the gain for the common base is 240. Okay, and the load connected outside is 8.2 kilo ohms so what we want to do here is that we want to determine the loaded gain for each stage okay what is av1 what is av2 basically that's what the question is saying and then next is that find the total gain for the system of this cascaded amplifier which consists of av1 cascaded with av2 and find avs which is the gain having considered the source resistance and then find the total current gain for the system okay so first this is the um, uh, loaded gain for each stage so we're just using this formula that we have uh, uh, learned from the previous slides um, so v out one and v in one we can rearrange so in this case uh, rl for amplifier 1 RL is 26 ohms which means 26 ohms comes from here is the input impedance of the second stage because you connect it to this this uh, amplifier 1 is connected to amplifier 2 and amplifier 2 has an input impedance of 26 ohms meaning that this 26 ohm is actually RL for this amplifier 1 so RL is 26 divided by 26 plus R out R out in this case because we, we are treat we are considering the first stage R out is actually Z out output impedance which is 12 ohms so 26 divided by 26 plus 12 times AV and L 1 so um, uh, the uh, uh, formula here uh, uh, AV1 is actually 0 0.684 okay so the gain of this stage is 0 0.684 and that's a bit strange right because usually you want the gain to be large but you will see why we need an amplifier here later okay now AV2 for this common base all right RL is obviously 8.2 kilo ohm this is the actual load resistance RL plus R out and R out here we have to consider R out 2 which is 5.1 kilo ohms okay and the gain 
uh, with no load is 240 meaning that AV2 which is the loaded voltage uh, loaded voltage gain for the second stage is 147.97 so since it's cascaded the overall gain for uh, load, uh, loaded voltage gain is just a multiplication of 0 0.684 and uh, 147.97 which gives us 101.2 now the effect of the source resistance which is 1 kilo ohm okay is now z in 1 which is going to be 10 kilo ohms divided by z in 1 plus rs because we're, we're considering this first part of this um, um, uh, reduction factor okay z in 1 plus rs which is 10 kilo ohm plus 1 kilo ohm multiplied by rl over rl plus r not uh, r out times avnl so this one is actually avt okay which is going to be 101.2 and the answer is 92 okay and if we consider the next uh, question which is current gain uh, overall current gain so overall current gain is just using this formula so 101 times uh, 0 0.2 times input impedance of z in 1 okay which is 10 kilo ohms divided by rl which is 8.2 kilo ohms giving us 123.41 now if you look at the example if the emitter follower had not been there meaning that if we do this calculation without emitter amplifier meaning that vs and rs is connected directly to the common base okay the overall gain okay here with the source resistance is just going to be 3.7 it's not going to be 92 okay so even though emitter follower here gives a voltage gain for stage 1 of 0 0.684 but uh, because of its input impedance Okay, because of its high input impedance, it actually improves the overall voltage gain of this cascaded amplifier. So it's uh, beneficial to have the emitter follower connected before the common base. And you will find that when you're designing actual amplifiers, that this is a very useful piece of information. Okay, so now we're done with two port networks. We're done with uh, cascaded amplifiers we're just going to have a very quick look at gain in decibels you're going to use this 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 um this word decibel here uh, very often in a lot of applications be it in um, electronics uh, circuits to calculate gain or in communication circuits or even in control theory um, because before this, before decibels, before you are in, uh, introduced to decibels, usually we handle values, uh, the linear values, uh, which means that if you're finding gain, any gain is just output over input signal. So if it's voltage gain, it's V out over Vn. If it's current gain, it's I out over In. If it's power gain, it's P out, P out over P in. But if it's in decibel, decibel is a ratio between two signal power voltage or current levels. And if it's voltage gain, the formula is uh, 20 log V out over V in. So all you need to do is just add 20 log V out over V in. Okay? This 20 log is being added to voltage and current gain. Now if it's voltage and current, the value that you add, you multiply is 20. Okay? For the power gain, the value that you multiply is 10. Okay? There is a reason for it, but we're not going to handle it here now. Um, uh, there is a um, historical and a mathematical reason behind it. Okay. So for cascaded stages, the overall decibel gain of a cascaded system is the sum of decibel gains of each stage. So if I have um, uh, stage 1, stage 2, I just add the uh, decibel gain value. Okay. The difference with decibel gain is that it's because you're dealing with logs, logarithmic scale. If you're doing a linear value, you multiply. Okay. So here is an example. The input power to a device is 10,000 watts at a voltage of 1,000 volts. 
the output power is 500 watts and the output impedance is 20 ohms. Now find the power gain in decibels. Now you will find that um, you're actually um, having something smaller at the output, right? So um, you, so let's have a look here. Find the power gain example. So it's 10 log of P out over P in. 10 log, 500 watts over 10 kilowatts, which means that you're going to introduce a negative value here. Okay, because you need to inverse this. So the answer is negative 13 dB. Okay, negative 13.01 dB to be exact. Now the voltage gain in decibel, again, the voltage uses the value 20. So it's 20 times um, uh, V out over V in uh, log base of 10. So um, again, here you don't have V out, but instead you have output power, which is 500 watts, and output impedance, which is 20. So since P is equal to V squared over R from the expression of uh, power is equal to voltage times current. Uh, v out is the square root of PR, so 500 watt times 20 divided by V in, which is 1000 volts. So you're going to have the expression here to be equal to negative 20, 20 dB. Okay, and the input impedance is R in is equal to V in squared over P in. So V in is um, 1000 volts and PN is 10,000 watts, uh, giving you an input impedance of 100 ohms. So uh, it, that if, if you're trying to understand what this example is all about, it's just uh, showing you how to use this um, uh, expression um, relating output to input um, in decibels. Okay. So decibels is quite a common term and um, used um, so you, you need get getting used to it another example an amplifier rated at 40 watt output okay 40 watt output is connected to a 10 ohm speaker calculate the input power required for full power output if the power gain is 25 db and B is calculating the input voltage for rated output if the amplifier voltage gain is 40 db 40 dB. Okay, so solution for part A, again we use the formula of the gain equals to 10 log P out over P in. Okay, so gain here is given to be 25 dB. P out is 40 watts. Okay, and P in is what is being asked here because they're asking you to calculate the input power required. So rearranging, I have P in to be equals to, if you do the necessary mathematics here, you get it to be about 126.5 milliwatt. Part B gives you the input voltage, okay, V out over V in, um, and the formula is times 20. Um, and from this formula, again, we use uh, the fact of P is equals to voltage times current. So V out is equal to square root of P times R, giving you an input voltage of um, 200 and millivolts. Okay, so this is just um, allowing to play with the uh, expressions for gains in decibels. So the last part of this topic is general frequency considerations. Okay, so what we're going to do here is that um, before we close this off, um, let, we're going to have a look at. Um, uh, so we, we we need to understand some important points about frequency of amplifiers. Okay, first the frequency response. Ideally, amplifier must provide the same amplification for all frequencies. Okay. Frequency response of an amplifier is therefore important to ensure stable amplification. So if you look at this plot here, you want the amplifier to provide ideally just a straight horizontal line across all frequencies, but we know that this is not going to be possible. So it is common to um, analyze your amplifier. Okay. 
um, to know for sure where stable amplification takes place okay and doing this is what you call frequency response so this is a plot this graph that you see here is called a body plot a body plot illustrates the frequency response of an amplifier okay so this is this is the plot here it goes up to a certain point and then it stays constant up to a point that it falls down again so in this body plot the horizontal scale indicates the frequency in Hertz okay this is in Hertz and the vertical scale indicates the gain in dB but this um, horizontal scale is going to be in logarithmic uh, scale not linear the mid-range of an amplifier is called the bandwidth of the amplifier. This is the mid-range. Here, where the amplifier shows uh, stable amplification, this mid-band range here, this is what you call the bandwidth. Okay. The bandwidth is defined by the lower and upper cutoff frequency, FL and FH. The cutoff frequency is any frequency at which the gain has dropped by 3 dB from its mid-band range value. So here is the mid-band range value. Once it has fallen off lower than 3 dB, that's where we consider the cutoff frequency to take place. So you're going to have a lower cutoff frequency and a higher and the upper cutoff frequency. Okay, so why is the bandwidth limited? The frequency mid-range bandwidth is the range that the amplifier will operate with negligible effects from capacitors and device internal capacitance, meaning the amplification here is stable and high. But at frequencies below mid-range, the coupling and bypass capacitors lower the gain. Okay, you're going to have coupling and bypass capacitors in your amplifier and those are what is going to lower the gain here. At frequencies above mid-range, stray capacitances associated with the active device lower the gain. Okay, this is device related, then this is um, amplifier related. Okay, but whatever it is, you're going to have uh, a point where only um, this is where only the amplifier is uh, safe to operate. Anything else is going to be too low a frequency or too high. So the decibel voltage gain is maximum in the mid-band mid and each cutoff frequency, the decibel voltage gain is down slightly from the maximum value, meaning that below FL, the decibel voltage gain decreases 20 dB per decade. So every decade of, um, of Hertz, um, you will find that uh, gain will roll off by 20 dB. Above FH as well, the decibel voltage gain decreases 20 dB per decade. What this is saying is that when you're designing amplifiers, okay, you just need to make sure that you're operating within the right frequency range.